I imagine most of you know that I write Victorian whodunits with a touch of humor set in the Gilded Age, that is the late 1890s. Well, this is the beginning of my historical love letter to St. Louis. A little background first. To commemorate the city's sesquicentennial, St. Louis presented a grand pageant and mask in Forest Park over Decoration Day weekend of 1914 to more than 40,000 people. The event was massive. Stage bigger than a football field at the foot of our hill and canoes on the water too. 7,500 in the cast and 70,000 each night in the audience. Just as a point of reference, Bush Stadium seats 45,000 and change. The show traced our city's history, mystical, mythical, and real, from 13th century France to 20th century Missouri. The grand success of this show inspired a celebration of Shakespeare's tercentenary, 300 years after he died, in 1916. As You Like It starred Sidney Greenstreet of Maltese Falcon fame and featured a thousand singers and dancers in the wedding scene. The Muni soon followed with its first official formal production, Aida, on June 3rd, 1917. Well, these were the beginnings of the St. Louis Municipal Opera, the oldest and still the largest outdoor theater in the United States. One rehearsal was even filmed way back in 1917. So now let me introduce you to my 18th, my night, I'm sorry, my 19th century stage mother, Adamagia Schneckecki, and the world's grandest city sponsored outdoor dramatic entertainment by Fedora Amos. Friday, May 29th, 1914. Addie, what in tarnation have you done to our son's hair? The head looks like a musk melon with broom straws stuck in it. Addie tucked two packets of powders and a bottle of syrup of Ipecac into her satchel. Do be calm, dearest. The cause is a few drops of hydrogen peroxide. Perfectly innocent, perfectly harmless, I assure you. Why, pray tell, did you douse a seven-year-old's head with chemicals? Well, I would think the boy's own father should understand the demands of the theater. The child symbolizing young St. Louis must be golden. Have you lost your senses? The mass committee chose two boys to play the part. Neither is named Schnett Gecky. Am I wrong? No, dearest. I well know the names of the chosen boys, Kenneth Maxwell and Ludlow Tuckerman. Well, since we agree our last name is neither Maxwell nor Tuckerman, doesn't it stand to reason our son will not play the part? Not even broom straw hair will change that. Addie folded a long black sash around a child-sized tunic of luminous white silk. She tucked both neatly in her satchel. Leave it to me, dearest. The committee chose boys with light hair, rich parents, and no talent. Quite wrongheaded, and I mean to prove it. But August Jr. already has a role. He's an Osage Indian. Who ever heard of a blonde Indian? Addie patted her husband's hand. It's all under control. I made a wig with lovely long braids of black yarn. But what about Addie's skin? He's the color of a peeled banana. He'll be completely covered in shirt and trousers made of muslin. I dyed them with tea and beaded them myself. I suppose this is another one of your schemes to get your name in the newspaper. Addie squeezed her husband's arm. Not at all. My name is on the list of performers and so is Augie's. I simply want to show St. Louis that the pageant committee 
should have chosen our boy to play young St. Louis. They have a plan. Do you want to hear it? No, Shotzi, if you tell me, I'll have to stop you for the sake of the public good. If I don't know, I'll have a clear conscience. Of course, you can find out more about Addie's fictional plan and St. Louis's real mask in Love Letters to St. Louis, an anthology by the St. Louis Writers Guild to commemorate the Guild's centennial.